Imagine I have a beautiful tree that's filled with oranges. And I ask myself, what is the orange made of? How do I answer that question? Well, I want to look deeply inside the orange, so I magnify it. And I magnify it again, and if I keep on doing it, deep inside, sooner or later, I begin to see molecules come into view. But molecules are not the end of the story because the molecules, I can enlarge them. And if I make them big enough deep inside, I begin to see atoms. Atoms are not the end of the story too because we have electrons zooming around the nucleus. Deep inside, mostly empty space in the atom, but deep inside, we see the nucleus. So if I grab that and magnify it, I see that the nucleus is itself made of particles, neutrons and protons. And if I grab one of the neutrons and magnify it, I find yet further particles, little tiny quarks inside. Now that is where the conventional ideas stop. String theory comes along and suggests that inside these particles there is something else. So if I take a little quark and I magnify it, Conventional idea says there's nothing inside, but string theory says I'll find a little tiny filament, a little filament of energy, a little string-like filament. And just like the string on a violin, I pluck it and it vibrates, creates a little musical note that I can hear. The little strings in string theory, when they vibrate, they don't produce musical notes, they produce the particles themselves. So a quark is nothing but a string vibrating in one pattern. An electron is nothing but a string vibrating in a different pattern. A neutrino, nothing but a string vibrating in a different pattern still. So if I take all of this back together, I have my ordinary orange, and if these ideas are right, they are speculative, but if they are right, deep inside the orange or any other piece of matter is nothing but a dancing, vibrating cosmic symphony of strings. That's the basic idea of string theory.